back with another mini episode coming into your earphone saying hi saying what's up it's the colorado rockies jake's rocks my that's rocks a, baby the closest we'll get to saying the opposite of jake sucks which is a mm. uh, something we say around here it's a play jake, on words jake rocks you're leaving denver leaving denver how long until you're done with your the Denver time in your life where you don't care about them at all anymore? Ooh, interesting. Um, because I don't have a huge attachment to the Texas Rangers, and I lived in Dallas. But, I mean, that kind of sucked because they were the perfect distance away that you can't, like, be attached to them. They're in Arlington. It's like a 25-minute drive. So it's like, okay, it's going to be kind of like an expensive Uber if I want to drink and stuff, or if I drive then I can't drink and stuff. And then um, the Rocky Stadium, if you're a baseball fan, it's a must. It's in the heart of downtown. It's a perfect location. Um, and I I was lucky enough when I moved out here, I was Craigslist in an apartment, and I lived literally right next to the stadium. It was awesome. Um, so I will always have a little bit of an attachment uh, to the Rockies, more so than uh, the Texas Rangers. Yes, and you will try to tell me that they're not going to be bad and they're not in a state of total disaster when they are. Arenado's publicly going off and saying he wants out. Then they're like, making And I told you he'd walk that back in a couple days, and he did. For PR reasons, he walked it back because he knows it's a bad look, but he did have an honest moment where he said this is bullshit because guess what? The Rockies at the trade deadline did nothing. Then they sucked really bad. And then this offseason, the most active offseason we've seen in a while, who did the Rockies add? Uh, No one. Or unless right. you want to, unless you want to count Jose Mujica uh, to a one-year deal, they went after no one. Unless you want to count uh, Ubaldo Jimenez to a minor league right. deal, they extended Trevor Story, but not even an extension. They just bought out his arbitration that he was already going to be on the team for. They just don't have to arbitrate anymore. They James. added no one, and James they lost man. no one. Yeah. May I counter your point? Sure, counter away. In 2018, base, baseball can be a fickle sport. You know that. They essentially had the same team, and they went 91 and 72. Who was their starters then? Same exact starters? Pretty Freeland, much, man. Ma- Freeland, Marquez, Anderson, Gray, Bettis? Freeland, Marquez, Anderson, Gray, Bettis, Sanzatella, yeah. It's a good counter, but... You still want your team to get better, especially when you have a terrible collapse. Right. And I, I think and and I'm 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 not gonna be as rocky heavy as as you probably think. Hey, they were fifth in attendance in twenty eighteen. Go to the stadium, guys. It's great. Fourth last year. How about that? With a terrible season. Anyways, here's what's going on in Colorado. Obviously, Coors Field, I'm not gonna give that spiel to you. Tim Melville's my best friend. Okay, we're done there. This is their window. And I know when I say that, you laugh a little bit. Yeah. Um, but but the Rockies, they don't operate like a big market team. And they should. Now that I'm seeing those attendance numbers and knowing, you know, they, they charge nine bucks for a beer or so. Uh, they got to roll it out. But they do have to be a little more tactical with their money, especially when you pay one guy, Nolan Arenado, a lot of money, which is fine. That dude deserves that money. Might be one of the best third basemen ever. So that's fine. But, dude, when you look around, there is a lot of young talent on this team, and Kyle Freeland's season just fell apart last year. Marquez, I think you'll remember this, Jim. I think he had one game that was, what, it was like one inning, 12 earned runs. (laughs) If you take that out, he's actually had a pretty good past couple seasons. They were brutal to him. That one game, they let him get rocked and eat like 12 earned runs, right? Yeah, I mean, it was was almost unfair. And I, I think here's... Here's where things got crazy because it was right about the time we started talking baseball. They were 44 and 40 last year, 84 games in. Um, I believe they were in a wild card spot at that point. They went into the All Star break and they lost. Let's see. I think they lost six straight. They hosted Houston and then Arizona. 
And then they came out of the break and they were still just tragic. They went from 44 and 39. So excuse me, 44 and 39 to 47 and 55 like that. They only Um, won six games in July and they only won six games in August. I mean, it was a disaster. And then, you know, you, you go from a wild card team. We're going to be in it to the end of the season to basically in the past three weeks, we just blew it. (laughs) And that's an awful feeling. And the wheels fell off. And I, I don't see the Rockies being competitors, but I find it hard to believe if you dig into the players, the numbers, I don't think they're going to have a record nearly as bad as they had last year. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, and here, here's, here's <laughs> before I, I will, I will let you go. But when you really line these up, when we, when we get to the Diamondbacks, when we get to the Padres, when you line up those three teams on paper, Man, you really start splitting hairs. I think the Diamondbacks with their recent Starling Marte trade might have gotten a little one up, but you also have to buy into Cattell Marte being the player he is. Dude, you put those three teams down on paper and you're Jake out. And so that's kind of my biggest pro Rockies argument I will give. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, like the pitching staff. San Sansatella career five three three ERA. His best season was in two thousand eighteen with a four three eight. John Gray career four four six ERA. His best season was two thousand seventeen. Last year he was the only one that was pretty good. Uh, Herman Marquez four seventy eight. It did get screwed by that one, but his best season was two thousand eighteen. Kyle Freeland best season by a long shot two thousand eighteen. So the fact that they're just rolling the dice like that's the norm when it's really like all these guys uh, exceptions, not the rule. Like I don't believe in that. And and that's fair. And you you shouldn't believe in all of them, but you should also give them all a little more credit. I mean, think about we just came back from talking about the Giants. Everyone you just mentioned isn't approaching 30. Everyone is 28 and under. Um, a lot of guys are closer to 25. I mean, last year, Herman Marquez was 24 year, years old. Kyle Freeland, I mean, think about how far we've come. And, dude, baseball can be a real bitch. Think about how much we loved Kyle Freeland. Freeland when he was wild card game and we're talking about this dude with moxie and yeah he doesn't strike dudes out but he's from Colorado he knows how to pitch there blah 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 I mean Kyle Freeland isn't gonna have a 673 ERA this year um I mean that's that's crazy and again like John Gray (laughs) when when Rockies were talking last season they were saying hey if John Gray figures it out we might really compete John Gray was the one that figured it out everything else kind of fell apart so uh, and again what for me what does this add up to and I you know I don't want to jump ahead to the over under because I when I I'm gonna say a lot of positive things because I know you're not too too high on my rocks I mean I'm seeing a 500 baseball team when oh that's when you fine. Lay, that's bad yeah but yeah good yeah um so I mean that's uh when uh, I'll I guess taper my expectations or I don't know what the phrase is, but I, I don't want you thinking I'm hyper bullish. Like I, I do you think t- they, do I, you think they're going to have a shot at the wild card? A lot would have to go right. Like I'm going to say no. Yeah, um, okay. It, it's baseball and, and stuff can happen, but a lot of stuff would have to happen. They may have a shot at second place in the NL West, but like not the wild card. Right. But I mean, think think about that. I mean, what's like, what's the worst record you can have and finish second place in your division? You know what I'm saying? Well, like seventy and something. I think you have to be over five hundred to finish second in your division, right? Maybe I guess so. Yeah. I mean, names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, they have the stars. Like the top four are great, right? I mean, you got Arenado. Arenado's incredible. Trevor Story's best at his position. Blackman's there. It was, it was David Dahl. We're counting him. He had a good season last year. I don't know. but uh, David Dahl was an all-star, yeah. Their outfield defense last year was the worst in the league, so that's fun. Or second worst, I think the Orioles were the worst. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 the outfield defense was disastrous. I don't really know what that was. Uh, Jim, I will ask you, because he, he's someone that I, I know my Rockies podcast people will be happy if I talk about, bring up the uh, red ball, blue ball chart with Ryan McMahon. 
He's a, he's a young guy, 24, who I, I think he's on the verge of, of breaking out. He had 24 home runs last year and is, uh, I think, I don't know, I forget if that was officially or unofficially his rookie season. They are going to hit. And I mean, it's the story of the Colorado Rockies, dude. Like, why, why even dance around it? This team is going to hit a lot and their pitching is going to get roughed up. And they're, I won't say Achilles heel, dude, their bullpen is terrible. Might might challenge the Mariners for worst bullpen in baseball. Okay, so Ryan McMahon, <laughs> his rookie year was 2018. Last year, he had a 779 OPS, an 87 OPS plus, and his baseball savant is high in exit velocity, high in hard hit rate, poor in expected batting average, poor in WOBA, poor in slugging. Not yeah. an impressive stat guy. I, hard hit rate, baby. <laughs> yeah, he hit ninety yeah, first percent on hard hit rate, but everything else is under is below average. It's hitting it hard, baby. So I mean, you um, can you can hang on to that, but uh, the Yorba Linda kid, um, the eye test might be better than the stats. I'll say that. Yeah, and hey, it was a twenty four year old that landed twenty four home runs. That that can play second base for you. But dude, I mean, Story is one of maybe the most underrated players in baseball. He kind of had that crazy start. Like the 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 things he does at shortstop is incredible. Arenado, obviously, I, I don't need to dive into that. Uh David Dahl was an all-star last year. He's 25. He's only going to get better. Uh Charlie Blackman continues to rake and play atrocious defense. Uh talk about a team that could benefit from the DH. Uh, Daniel Murphy was their big mistake. They signed him to basically the same contract as DJ LeMayhew, the homegrown guy. Daniel Murphy's weird. It's a weird fit. He's bad defensively. And, you know, you could talk yourself into it last offseason. Like, hey, he's a guy that he seems like the typical Colorado Rockies guy that you're like, hey, man, I, I could see him ended up, you know, hitting 325 next year. It didn't work out. He's a weird clubhouse guy. They're going to rake. It just depends how many of the starting pitchers figure it out. Yeah. I mean, everyone will rake at course. So, got to pitch. A lot of guys. I mean, it's... it's Not Daniel Murphy. <laughs> Daniel Murphy's weird. I mean, he looks like the boyfriend on Roseanne, and he's weirding up the whole clubhouse and just weirding out the whole everyone's vibe. And I'm not... I, I say that from no point of knowing it's true. Or uh, ha hearing rumors or hearsay that that's true. I just look at him and think it. And right. that's all I know. Right. Um, here's what I'll say, Jake. They better get off to a hot start. I think we've been saying this a lot. But if they, like, start sucking right away, I think we're going to hear some more shitty quotes. We're going to hear, like, I think the GM is going to try and fire the manager so it's, like, not his fault, it's the manager's fault. Like, it 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 it, it reached a boil in the offseason, and then they quickly went to simmer. We still got hot water in the pot. And if yeah. things go, things get ugly, I think it's boiling again quick. No, and I, I don't think we're saying that as much as you, as you think. I mean... Like, with the San Francisco Giants that we just talked about, like, it would be good for them, but, I mean, their season ends with disaster anyways. Like, yeah. the Rockies could be 70 wins to 85 wins, and I, I think a hot start is a big factor in that. Uh, yeah, man, they, they've got some young dudes. They gave Brendan Rodgers a call for a little bit last year. It wasn't good, but he's, he's a big-time prospect. I don't know, man. Their bullpen is bad. I mean... Okay, why you don't like, like Oberg, crazy Davis, bad. Shaw, like McGee? Like crazy bad. I mean, are you looking at Wade Davis's stats from last year? They traded Philip Deal for Talkman. And that's the other thing. There's a couple transactions that have happened, and you're, you're right. With the stuff that's going on with the media, if the wheels fall off on this season, whether it's early, middle, or late, when that happens, it's going to get ugly. Uh, you know, their their dream season is probably like 88 wins. If everything goes swimmingly, that's like a dream dream. After that, I, I don't know, man. I, I think you're looking at around 500. If the wheels do fall off earlier, if someone like Freeland just seems like he doesn't have it. Yeah, man. I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm rooting for my rocks. I'm I'm very interested to see what the over under is. And uh, I, the the other guy that I feel like Rocky fans would want me to mention is Sam Hilliard. He's a decent prospect for him, big boy outfielder. 
Um, it'll be interesting to see what he brings to the table. Yeah, man. Uh, this this pitching staff is tough. Uh, I will tough, give this tough field. Tough field. I will give this information to the people. Uh, Herman Marquez, Scott Oberg. No, 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 no. Strike that. Reverse it. Jake McGee, Brian Shaw, Daniel Murphy are on contract years, and yeah. can maybe their deadline targets. Most likely, they're not. Yeah, but. Who knows? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. And then do we do they have any any prospects like that are coming up? So I, m- I mentioned Brendan Rogers. He's he's their number one. He got a cup of coffee last year and it wasn't great. Uh, honestly, man, they uh, Daniel Murphy and Ian Desmond, utility guy. That's actually I think well liked by the Rockies, but what they paid him isn't what he's doing. Those two contracts are kind of hurting them because they have young guys that can do what those guys do, especially on offense, and they need all that money devoted to pitching, and the front office won't do it currently. But, yeah, I, it, there's a world where Brendan Rodgers is a is a name you need to know in the future, talented middle infielder. Um, and I mentioned Sammy Hilliard. He, uh, you know, he he's going to get a chance to play this year, but it's a tough ballpark, man. Would you want to play there? For money? Uh oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, same. Yeah, I same. mean last last year they were last in ERA, last in whip. Those are a couple big ones. Fifth in batting average, ninth in OPS. So yeah, I'm I'm excited to see what the over under is. Okay. Well, the over under is seventy eight. Seventy five and a half. Okay. And you know what? I'm going over. Nice. Because the NL West, I don't think is, I don't think the other four teams in the NL West, I think it's going to be a blood bash of mediocrity between the Diamondbacks, who I think will eventually get second place, uh, the Giants and the Padres. Uh, I think there is easily a world where, you know, baseball is not a simulation. If you ran a simulation with this year's NL West a hundred times, the Dodgers win it a hundred (laughs) times the Rockies. Yeah. The Rockies D backs and Padres, man. I mean, it's either any of them can fall two through four with a little bit of injuries or a little bit of this. I'll go over. Uh, I'll go over. Love my rocks. I'm wearing purple today. I know. I I saw that and I thought, did he know? But I didn't actually think that because there's zero chance. You, you, no chance, no chance. chance. Zero chance. Hey, also coming off the Giants, I mean, does this not seem like a watchable team or am I being too polluted by the stadium and living out here? I don't think it seems like a watchable team besides the main stars. Okay. But I, I, with the Giants, I said, like, I like I like that. So I was a little biased. I said, I like that stadium. So they're still going to go enjoy baseball. So I think we're saying the same right. thing there. Okay. No, there's no. I mean, you you do have stars. You have like three stars. So I'll give him that. You've got a couple stars, and I I think there's a couple young guys you can you can be excited about. So that's not too bad. I mean, what what would you say the zeitgeist of Rockies Nation is? I I have no idea, but my guess would be they're not that enthusiastic about the off season, everything that's gone on. Yeah, you use zeitgeist a lot, and I forget the definition every time. It's um, like the the common thought of the people of the time. I mean, it's it's just nervous times because, like like I said, this was their window. They in 2018, this was a 90 plus win team, and then they brought back essentially everyone and signed Daniel Murphy, thinking that would boost them, and they landed up being a 71 win team. I mean, that's that's drastic. So they're saying, like like you said, a hot start would be pretty nice um, if they could if they could convince themselves like, wow, the wheels fell off last year and that was a mess. But yeah, they're, they're really, they're bummed out by if they could, if they could get rid of the Daniel Murphy and Ian Desmond contracts and put that money towards pitching, people would be really bullish on that. They can't do that. Nobody wants them. (laughs) So yeah, man, they're, uh, they're hoping that they're good enough to keep Nolan Arenado in town. Yeah. I hope. Well, I hope they are. I like when guys stay and they get better within. So there you go. I mean, they have they have two potentially, depending how Trevor Story's rest of his careers goes, 
They have two potentially generational guys on the left side of the infield, and it's going to suck if they feel like they wasted that. And DJ LeMahieu, who they did waste, and they brought Murphy besides yeah. him. Yeah. All right. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Do you want, do you want to say something? <laughs>